Easy E, how are we? Johnny, getting skinnier, hopefully. <laughs> good, good to hear, good to hear. You're near the end of week two of the of um your your 75 day challenge. And this week's episode is really gonna set you up for the next couple of weeks and months ahead. Yeah, this week's episode is really good, Sean. We've got someone on with quite a lot of experience in in the the do's, the don'ts, and the what can go right and what can go wrong in, in the world of racing and Ironman. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. We're going to, we'll leave a lot for the podcast, but just to build you up. Uh, so we have Anthony Fenley on the podcast this week. Um, I, you're here in a couple of minutes when we start interviewing him. Like I'm reading some of the stuff this man has done and I'm like, how does this guy have any sort of time at all? Like he runs his own gym, Urban Fitness in Cork. He also is the, the general manager of Power Gym in the Dean in Cork as well. He's a triathlete. He's a former League of Ireland goalkeeper. And it's mad seeing those parallels with yourself there on that and that one as well, because you were obviously a goalkeeper and you know, you're transitioning into the triathletes and stuff like that as well. So that 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 was that was deadly to see for I, I imagine so for you. Yeah, it was kind of good because you did the research on this one, Shani. It was a bit busy, but it's uh it, it's a nice little intro into me to to see now obviously he had a full professional career I suppose I had a promising younger career but found alcohol women and engineering after that so that was not the so end much engineering like I, you went you no, went true engineering, engineering. <laughs> it was more the alcohol and the yeah the let's call it spade cheesy, spade <laughs> the garlic cheesy chips that was the end of me but it's um no it's absolutely great it's great to see it and there's some parallels in 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 some of the thought processes of 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 what it's like and 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 that transition away from team sports so yeah a really really enjoyable episode it was one of those i, I could have just sat there for hours and it's definitely mm. someone we'll we'll probably have on again but we won't give away too much more sean's probably best just to crack on into it uh with that said this is this week's episode of the any given one day podcast let's go So this week on the Any Given Monday podcast, we have a former League of Ireland goalkeeper turned triathlete who also manages a power gym, power gym in the Dean in Cork. Power, and gym, is, yeah. power gym in Cork and is the owner of Urban Fitness uh, Personal Training Studio in Cork as well. Thank Anthony you. Fennelly, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here, lads. Anthony, I'm looking Good. at that stuff there. How do you have time for all this? <laughs> um, sometimes I question that myself, you know. Um, to be honest, well, I just love being active and being busy. You know what I mean? Um and um, I love having a good, heavy schedule of things planned out. So it's all about my preparation and my planning and um, and making sure that um, I make time for family and, you know, relationships and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So you have to fit it all in. So that means sometimes you got to get out of bed early and get into bed late. What? 100%. Eric, Anthony, you're gonna say something? Uh, oh no. Anthony, <laughs> no, a few correlations. Sean did the research on this one and he said there's a quite a few similarities between the two years here. Who'd you play with? I uh, played with a few clubs now, to be honest. Um <laughs> I played with with Cork, uh Cork City, Waterford, Dundalk, um, Athlone. I was up the north Limavady. Um I was in the UK with Wimbledon. Um I was over in America with uh, San Diego Flash. So I've been with a few. I've been with a few. You've been around. I was once, and now I retired very young when I found alcohol, women, and engineering. But yeah. the, uh, I was once a goalkeeper in the League of Ireland. Oh, before. really? Who did you play with? Back when Sport and Fingal had money. But, oh, um, I remember it well. Yeah, I remember it well. I played, <laughs> I played against Sport and Fingal. I've actually, it's a funny story, actually. Um, Jimmy McGill was the manager of uh, Waterford. And at the time, I had, um, I had, Dropped out a team to uh, a guy called Wayne Russell, and um, the wonderful sign Wayne Russell from Bowes, and uh, he was I was at the club a couple of weeks, and he got injured. I got back in, and we would play sport in Fingal above. I'm trying to remember um, where the name of the ground. Santry Martin Stadium. Yes, Martin Stadium, tiny little pitch, yeah. and, and at the time um, I just got back in the team, and we got absolutely spanked. <laughs> I think it was 5-1. So the week after, Wayne was laughing because he was straight back in the team, you know? But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a topsy turvy season for me, um, whereas me and Wayne were kind of in and out the team, you know what I mean? But uh, other than that, it was um, it was a good spell there, actually, to be honest, at Waterford. Oh, very good, very good. Well, it's nice to know that goalkeepers do turn into triathletes. There's hope for me, Anthony. There is. And you know, and, me, and yeah. you know, when when I meet some of the players that I played with over the years, and um, and they see me now, and they're like, 
He used to fucking hate running. Sorry for that. Oh, he hated it. Yeah. That's he what he said that plenty of times the podcast. He hated yeah. running. He used, to, he used to hate running, you know what I mean? Um, uh, he used to hate pre-season. Because um, yeah. I remember in water, we used to do pre-season in a place called um, uh, Out in Tremor, where we used to go up the Baldy Man. And um, a guy called Paddy Stinger Ryan used to make sure that we had to kind of complete the run in the Baldy Man 10 times by the end of pre-season. It was absolute hell on earth. And I used to hate running. And now I do it for fun. <laughs> yeah, I was the same. I said it to Sean. Like I used to run twelve yards maximum. I was like, I didn't. I just barely crossed the road. If you told me that, to be honest, <laughs> and now it's just it's it's mad, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was was that the smooth transition then when you when you retired as a goalkeeper? Did you go straight into track lead stuff or did no, you do marathons? Didn't, no, or? no, no, no. To be honest about it, um, when I finished playing, I found it really tough because I I obviously went from being a professional, and um, mm. that was my job, you know. Um, I found it really tough. I went down um, down the route where, personally, I've never drank. I've never drank. I've never smoked. None of that kind of stuff. But when I finished playing football, um, I found it really hard to focus on anything. Um, so I went down the road where I got a, a little de- little depressed, didn't know what to do with my life. Um, and to be honest about it, like, put on about two, about two and a half stone, you know? Um, yeah. So... I kind of, I was caught in a, in, in that, that kind of area where I was PTing people. I had my own gym, but I wasn't training myself. And I think what happened basically with me was, was the, the buzz of, we say, like you're preparing for your game every week. So basically you're training Monday, uh, Monday Tuesday, off Wednesday, in Thursday, you know, in, in between that, then you're in the gym and stuff like that. But what I found is, like once that was taken away, I had nothing, and the game on the, at at the weekend, obviously, I had nothing to train for. So for about about a year and a half to two years, I got into that that dangerous, dangerous area where life was a bit lost, you know. And to be honest about it, I and I'll tell you how how I got into racing. Obviously, I own a gym, and we were doing a mud run in um I think it was the a thing called uh, um. Uh, it was like a hell and back, hell, hell and back, hell, uh, the, like the hell and back uh, kind of mud run one, you know. But it was yeah. in the park. It was called Tough Mudder, and it was down in Mill Street. And I remember bringing a group down with me. There was a group of about twenty five of us, and I we were midway through the run. It was a dirty, horrible day, lashing rain, and I was struggling really bad. So I was bringing my clients down there, right, and I was the yeah. one at the back propping them up and pretending I was helping the older guys. But to be honest about it, I was in a heap. So I've been there. <laughs> I I'll never forget it. I went home and I sat on the couch and I was absolutely distraught because deep down I knew myself, I'd let myself down. And, and I was chatting to my mother and I said, that will never happen to me again. Right? That will never happen to me again. So I started going back into training, getting myself proper, getting myself fit, cutting the weight, and it has never happened to me again. Not one of my clients has ever beat me in a race since that day. I never will. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but it is. That's it is great motivation. You, say that. you did it for a professional career. For me, it ended at 22 college, joined the Defence Forces. That was the end of team sports, really, for myself. Yeah. Um, with the pilot side of things, we weren't allowed to play team sports. So um, <laughs> it kind of did end. Up. I did. I don't know if you agree. Like, I've gone into the individual side of things, similar to yourself now, Andy. Anthony, I, I train myself. I, I'm nearly weird now when I'm around people in training. and I'm kind of like, what? Oh, this is a different pace than I'm used to. But yeah. I found it difficult to leave team sports, good or bad, winning, losing, that feeling of being surrounded by people or letting them down, especially as goalkeepers. If you let yeah. a goal in a bit soft, you always feel like you let everyone down. And I suppose that emotion for you as the professional for such a long time, then you're just left to your own devices after being surrounded by all of that. It's it is very hard to to transition to that. But yeah, how do you find the headspace now of being on your own? Are you are you more comfortable with training on your own now? You just go into it there, lads, if you don't mind. Hundred <laughs> percent. He's like a little Yoda. Yeah, he's like a little celebrity. <laughs> he's playing up with me here. 
So, um, how do I? So, sorry, what were you saying there? How do I? How do I find that? Is it? How do you find it now? Like, did you know, have coming through the difficulty? Like, uh, I know for me, it took a long time to get very comfortable in my own head, having been surrounded by teams for so long, and, and been able to soundboard off other people and and rely on other people and win as a team and lose as a team. Yeah. Now it's just now it's just you versus you. How do you find it now? Um, I actually love it to be quite honest. Um, no, don't get me wrong. I still, I still love being involved with the team. Like I'm still involved with Cork City Football Club. Um, I'm first team coach at Cork City Football Club with the senior team. We're playing draw had it tonight actually. Um, so I'm the goalkeeping coach there. Um, but um, what I what when I went when I finished playing, um, I went to the coaching side of it, right? And I done all my all my badges. I've everything done. Uh, all is up to my A license, both outfield and goalkeeper. Um, and I was working with Tommy Dunn at Cork City when I finished playing and I, I enjoyed I did enjoy the coaching and I won't lie I do enjoy the coaching but it doesn't give me the same buzz as playing at all, at all you know what I mean it doesn't give me the same buzz um, and it never will you know and what I found with um, with racing and the transition to racing is that finish line feeling gives me the same buzz as walking up front of six, seven or 8,000 people you know mm-hmm. that gives me the same buzz and yes Yes, it's uh, we were we were part of team sports as as footballers, but as goalkeepers, you're very you're very isolated anyway, all right. Yeah. So like it's not as if you're in the middle of the field with 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 a teammate or 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 three other people. Do you know what I mean? Like so, when you're on goal, if you make mistakes on your head, you know, if you give away a ball in the middle of the park, you still have the back four and the goalkeeper to rescue you. You know. Mm-hmm. So for me, I suppose the transition was easy enough. Um. When, when I say that, um, but I love the grind, absolutely love the grind where like where you're out out on a bike for five, six hours in a race and you know like you're suffering, you know, and that, that part of it really motivates me, you know. So like I suppose the transition for me was, was easy enough. Um, I'm very disciplined where I can, if I, if, I, if I have my training schedule set out, no matter what happens, I train. You know, yeah. Whether someone else is meant to run with me or whether they don't turn up, I go, I get it done. You know, so I'm very disciplined that way. Uh, we're jumping well ahead in this one, but just when you talk about your 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 mental toughness there and and bike and suffering, um, I don't know want to bring up a bad thing for you or a good thing for you, but I have to bring up the Iron Man in Cork last year. Um, yeah. and and you, this was am I right in saying this was your first Iron Man you were training? No, for? no, this wasn't no, the first no, one. No, this has been my um. This is my was my fifth Ironman. That was your fifth Ironman, but this is the one with the with the, with the bike. So this one with the bike. What I want to sorry, boys. Hey, come here, you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what I want to say is right. That Ironman and y'all. Yes. Me and y'all have serious unfinished business. Um, and when I say that, I done y'all in two thousand and nineteen when the rain when the heavens opened. Right, the swim was cancelled. Right, if they basically if they put anybody into the sea that they didn't have enough lifeboats to take them out, right? So the swim was cancelled, and we started on the bike. Um, Alistair Brownlee won that Ironman that day. The the bike for me that day was absolute hell on earth. I got on the bike. That's 2019. Now I got on the bike. Mm. I had a pain in my back from standing in the cold for another three and a half hours, and it was lashing rain. So we got on the bike. We done. We were just heading out onto the course and the course director said it'll probably be one loop lads so give it socks right so think about it I was thinking right we're going to do 90k right yeah. so I went and I gave it everything in that 90k we went down we went out of y'all and down the Ballymacoda road and the water was two feet deep going down the Ballymacoda road like it was just spraying back on top of us right so I was coming back into y'all after the first loop thinking right I'm going on the run and next one I was waved on, carry on, right? So I had a cry. I physically had a cry on the bike thinking, you have to be joking me here. I've literally oh, no. the legs and gave it everything on the first cycle, on the first loop. And I was told, right, you got to keep going. But sure, look, you just have to refocus and go again. So off I went and I was coming back into y'all at about... But it was 20k to go, I'd say, not even maybe maybe 15k to go, and my chain snapped. Oh, right? that in 2019, my chain snapped. It cost me about about an hour and 20 minutes, right? So 
and why why that happened was I had no spare link, right? I've never, I, I'm not going to lie, I've never fixed a chain in my life, right? So yeah. it's never happened to me, right? Basically what happened was a stone got caught between the cog and the chain and it snapped the links of the chain, basically, because the, the weather was so bad. And that was fine. I pulled in, sat the side of the road, literally thinking that's it, you know? And um, was there and I took, I like out of panic, I took the chain off the bike, thinking, right, how do I fix it? And this guy came along, he said, he stopped in fairness to him and he said, I have a link. He said, I have no idea how to fix it. He said, I have a link and I have a link changer. You can have it if you want it, right? Uh-huh. In the end, right, I got it on, but it cost me a good hour and a bit, right? But it was only hanging on, hanging on by a thread. So it got me back into y'all. I couldn't get, I had to push the bike up Windmill Hill, right? But it got me back to, to the run, right? But yeah. it, it killed me on the day because I was completely hypothermic being cold, standing there for nearly an hour and a bit, stopped. And then obviously went on to the run. And on the run, the run then was hell on earth, to be honest. I don't remember the last 10 kilometers of the run whatsoever. My God. Yeah. And that was your introduction to Ironman. So that's... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest, I, I've never once carried a link for a chain. I've so, never... Yeah. Never, Never thought even about considered it. Considered it, no. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Like I have neither until then. I do now. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible uh, lesson to learn during that time. <laughs> yeah, of all the times to learn, you need a link in the chain and learning how in the middle of your first Ironman, probably one of the worst conditions ever oh, in Cork was, for for that reckon, Ironman. They reckon it was one of the one of the hardest Ironman to ever do with the conditions. You know, um, mm-hmm. some of the pros pulled out halfway through. Um, some of the pros didn't even bother starting the race. The rain was so heavy. With the rain was heavy and you're not doing the, the swim, did you have it? Did, like, I remember thinking about that. Like, Did you ever think, I'm not doing this because if I finished this, I didn't technically do an Ironman for not doing a swim? Or you're like, yeah, I made it yeah, now. That was the, that was the um, I suppose that was the joke that went down for for three years because of COVID. Yeah. You're like, ah, you never finished the one in your all or, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> and like, that's, that's always thrown at you. Do you know what I mean? Like, but... So, like, obviously, it, with COVID, then everything was kicked back. You know what I mean? Like, and, um, But to be fair, what I did find, and the only good thing with COVID was my training, my training ramped up and my running went through the roof, you know? Mm. Um, my times on my runs and stuff like that just went to another level. You know what I mean? So, in one sense, it was a good thing, you know, because I was able to put in those, in the time to improve that area. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. But what I will say is, like, that Iron Man and y'all in 2019, it literally could have killed me. Yeah. I remember seeing the footage and watching Brownlee running in that rain and, yeah. like, waterlogged. Yeah, absolutely a picture, waterlogged. The picture of my mother um, at the finish line. I'm roaring, crying, um, and she's giving me a hug. And to be honest about it, I don't remember it, you know? But it's an amazing picture I have it up in my gym. Um, it's an amazing picture of me and my mother. But um, I remember my brother ran alongside me for the last kind of six, seven K. Um, no recollection whatsoever of him being alongside me. And I was giving out to him, telling him, hurry up. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like he's never ran a day in his life, by the way. He's big into lifting weights. Yeah. And, and yeah, I don't have any recollection, recollection of finishing that race at all. You know, so that's why uh, the race in 2022 was going to be the one I was going to kind of uh, put you all The comeback pick. tour. Mm. Yes, but that was not a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that didn't go my way either. Um, and that's where the bike story comes into play now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, and that was completely, like, it was like chalk and cheese because, like, that was 31, 32 degrees that day. You know? So, like... Which is unheard of, really, for Ireland. Oh, that's completely. Nice. Like, it was madness. Like, like... I'll never forget, I went down to watch the half because they'd done the half and the full in the one weekend. And um, I had a, a friend of mine, Shane Hennessy, he's involved in the Cork Tri Club, and he was running in the half on the Saturday. And I went down to that. I never forget and thinking, I need to get out of the sun. You know, it was Jeez. absolutely sweltering. I've never experienced heat like it in, in Ireland, to be honest. And I lived in I, I lived in the Middle East in Doha, and um, it was like that. It was genuinely as hot as that. 
And here's me booking ones for Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? The ones abroad, the ones abroad are amazing. When you race abroad, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, definitely. Um, like, I want to do more races abroad, you know? Um, it's great to get away with the, with the crew and, and have the crack and, and, and use it as a holiday as well as, you know, your, your, your race. You're there for a reason as well, you know? After y'all in 2019, then, were your, your next few Ironmans, they, they were abroad. So um, no, so we 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 done. There was no race, and then obviously, so the next yeah. Ironman was twenty two. Was twenty twenty two yeah. in Cork, and, and that's the one you asked me about with yeah. the situation. I'll tell you that story. That's an amazing story, to be honest. Um, as I said, I done the swim, um, done the swim in I think it was one one eighteen. Um, absolutely buzzing coming out of water. Everything was on on par. Right, that's what I was. I was hoping to anything under 120, and I was happy. So came out number 180, and I was absolutely over the moon. Got on the bike, done the first loop in about three hours, which is serious, serious. Pretty good. Yeah, and I came to Windmill Hill, and it just it was like, what's going on here? I came to Windmill Hill the first time, and I got a puncture at the bottom of the hill. My tire. <laughs> but I'll tell you a story, right? I changed the tire. I changed the tire, right? Um, I changed. Emer was with me, um, the night before the race, and she said to me, "The, the there's a nick in the back of your tire," and I was like, "Don't be telling me that now, you know." Mm. So I went up to Wheelworks. They were on site, and I said it to the lads at Wheelworks, and they goes, "Look, we'll just change the tire." I don't know, 120 or whatever it be. Maybe I said, "Do change the tire." So we changed. They changed the tire anyway, and they racked my bike for me. So that was fine got on the bike after, after the swim went off and it came around the bend so when you come to Windmill Hill it comes across the kind of it brings up a laneway and then across a kind of little tiny lane and then you come into the crowd and you go up the hill you know mm. and right at the bottom of the hill there's actually a video on my Instagram of me coming up the hill with the flat wheel right the wheel went completely flat at the bottom of the hill right and I just the crowd the crowd was so amazing that I wasn't stopping you know, <laughs> I was getting off that saddle, right? And I went up the hill with on the flat, and you could see that like the struggle, but I was like, I'm not getting off the bike. So got to the very top, and when I got to the top, we're down the bend, and I said, Right, I'll fix the wheel, jumped off. And to be fair, it was uh, a couple of guys from um Stryker, they work with my brother and Stryker, and they seen what happened, they seen me and they came over and they actually gave me a hand changed the tire so we whipped it off whipped it on fairly quick and i was gone right so that was fine we came back around and i it was roughly in the same place that my chain snapped in 2019 and i'm not i'm not joking right i reckon it was within a half a kilometer of the same place right and i came around the bend and my tire exploded right so i obviously done damage to the tire going up the hill on when it was flat so I came around the bend and the tyre exploded so I kept going and I said right I see can I get home right but I was never getting home on on, on the rim do you know what I mean like mm. and uh, it's it's a funny story because the bike I used on the day is actually my brother-in-law Paul Hunt's bike um, because my TT um, got damaged the week before the race so he said look you can use my bike right so I came around um, and the wheel went and I tried to cycle on it for about two or three K, but I was on the rim, basically. <laughs> it's and not your bike. Keep going. <laughs> I, was bike. I was wrecking the rim, right? Bike, <laughs> right? But I got to the point where I was like, I can't. There's no way I can continue this. So I literally, there was a family out and they were spraying a stone with water and all that kind of stuff because the, the families in you all are amazing. And, and around the course, they were all amazing, like out with water because it was so hot. And I just pulled in and I said, lads, have you got a bike? And uh, the woman goes, what? She goes, I goes, have you got a bike? I said, my wheel is gone. I said, I can't finish the race on that bike. I said, have you got a bike? And she goes, hang on a second. I have something in the shed. So she comes out with this like, like. Pink streamers. Ah, <laughs> like, um, a woman's kind of a lady's mountain bike with a baby seat on the back. Right. Oh, God. And I was like, I can't take that. I said, I can't use that. She goes, she goes, that's all I have. She goes, give me a, give, give me a second. I'll ring the neighbor. So she rang the neighbor and the neighbor was, I don't know, maybe a kilometre down the road or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I was waiting. I was actually hiding behind the gate, 
in case anybody came along, you know what I mean? Like the, the rolling road, and I was panicking that was going to catch me. Do you know what I mean? Because I was there yeah. so long. And yeah. uh, they came up with this kid's mountain bike, right? And I'm not joking when I said this heavy steel kid's mountain bike, right? <laughs> with like, like the bull bar kind of horn bars, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the kind of the pressy kind of gears, you can clip the gears, you know what I mean? And I looked at the thing thinking, you have to be joking me here, right? So I took the sticker off the back of my bike and I stuck it onto that. Now, if I don't see this, they'll probably take the metal back off me. That's the way it went, right? But I was getting back to that, to that transition no matter what happened, right? So, but the mad thing was, I was in cleats. So I have to say- This thing at normal pedal. I, said, I oh. need your runners. <laughs> because I can't get on that in cleats I said I need your runners right <laughs> so we came around that way to bend and I, I got on the bike anyway and it was I said with 25k in, uh, to go and it was hell I've, it was harder than the first 150-160k the last 25k yes. <laughs> the one I was on do you know what I mean like yeah I wasn't even up to my hip. Do you know that? Do you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but yeah, so we jumped on, I jumped on the bike and off I went and got back into y'all. And obviously the dreaded Windmill Hill was there. So all my family, I'd warned my family, I said, be on the hill. I said, I want videos of me on the hill, right? <laughs> that's what I want, right? Because yeah, and they missed me the first time around. They said, we thought you'd be a bit longer, you know? But the, yeah. it's like it was so good the first time around that I was actually ahead of the game. And they missed me. So they were all on the hill. And there was, there was some at the bottom, some in the middle, and some at the top to get good videos, right? And next minute, I came around the bend, and I, I jumped off this bike, right? Yeah. I, was I was getting up the hill on it, by the way, right? And I started pushing it. And I see Paul Hunt's face on the right-hand side of the hill, and he was like in shock. And I just showed him, don't fucking open your mouth. <laughs> I passed him with the bike, right? And everyone was in shock looking at me stupid saying, like, what's he doing? Where's his bike? Where's, Where's his, his bike? <laughs> the guy that was on Women Hill doing the commentary, uh, we, there was like a, a big archway that we had to go under. And as I was coming up the hill, he kind of looked at me thinking, and he said, you did not do 170K on that bike. Mm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I'm done here. He's going to pull me out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would have been better off on my own bike. So like, it wasn't, like it, it wasn't actually cheating, but like it was either take the kid's mountain bike or not finish the race. Mm, yeah. The person, I'm getting to that finish line no matter what happens. You know what I mean? Like that medal is going around my neck, whether I have to crawl, walk. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because all my family and friends are at that finish line and they're not letting anybody down. That's what's in my head when I'm racing. You know what I mean? So I just put my head down anyway and they were all screaming running and I just ran past them, right? Got back to transition and uh, went into, in, in, into transition, just thrown the bike in, didn't want anyone to kind of see it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My legs were so shot. When I went into the tent, I went to sit down and I fell backwards over the chair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, I, was, I was gone. Like, I was like, how am I going to do this marathon? You know what I mean? And I would run a decent, decent marathon. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that's mm. my strong point is running. And um, so off I came and went out of the tent and I swear, man, lads, the first eight ten k, I was in so much pain. Oh, I'll, I'll never forget. I didn't think. I genuinely t- thought in my head, "There's no way I can run forty two k." Like my legs were completely shot. But what I would say is, once I got through that period, everything started coming around, and I started yeah. getting my rhythm and getting into back back into what I would normally run. But obviously, it did. It did have a big impact on me. Um, on my time and stuff like that because of what went on but I have to say I loved every minute of it you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh my it's an God. amazing That's story cool. right um, but there was nothing stopping me getting to that finish line I'm absolutely oh, sweating after listening to that story <laughs> never mind doing my own one jeez yeah. you know like, like, how, so whose bike are you taking this year I'm back on my own I'm back on my own bike if, if, if it lasts uh, because there's no way in the world Paul Hunt will give me his bike again. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting punched on the left, right, and centre, actually. And uh, he's getting punched on the left, right, and centre since I gave it back to him. He's, he's constantly blaming me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he might have a bit of a case there. <laughs> yeah, I jinxed that bike. Um, but yeah, like, what I have to say about y'all, though, that's, if you're, if you're going to do a triathlon or do an Ironman, get down and do y'all before they finish it. You know what I mean? 
it is absolutely sensational. And the crowds, the atmosphere in all the different towns between like Ballinacoda, Gary Vaux, Middleton, you know, um, yeah. and Yall itself. It's it's something it's something to behold. It's it's amazing, to be honest. Brilliant. Yeah, it's one I know a lot of people are using it as a half. A lot of people I know are talking to are, are going to do the half down there. They use it and then like that, they go abroad for the big one. They use the big one as the holiday type or the end of season type race. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely definitely one that's on the radar and like that they, they could end it soon enough yeah I well, it, it, as I said they got it for the three more years but like you know what will happen after that we don't know you know but like it's definitely one of the best the best races whether it be Martins triathlons or whatever it's definitely one of the best races I've ever done the atmosphere is just incredible uh, do you find it addicting even through all the, the so every time you do and you're like ah let's do that again oh it's the most addictive thing I've ever done um and and I mean that it's yeah I I can't explain I can't explain the feeling you get when you come over the line of an Ironman you know no as I said I don't remember the one in 2019 but like 2020 uh, two there like it was just like it's it's tear jerking to be honest I think if if you ever want to see grown men cry that's the place to go because everyone breaks. <laughs> you know you do you break man you break and um it's but it's the most addictive thing I've ever done, you know. And I know, I know, if the body suffers, and you know, you get your injuries, and you get all that kind of stuff. But like the the journey towards it, and knowing when you when you you know, I suppose when when someone doesn't put the work in, right, and they and then they can't complete it, and then they suffer, and and they get, you know, they go down that route. It's it's unfortunate. If you're going to do an Ironman prep properly plan properly and get your body and your and your mind in that place where you're ready to go right if you do that it's what else have the life changing and that's that's one thing is obviously we start the 75 day challenge and we're heading to cork for the marathon so that's going to be i'm marathon ready by the time that the summer starts which is a good place to be i suppose when you're yes. looking for a, an ironman come october so yes. it's um it's it's one thing that's driving me is and 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 it's one of the reasons I didn't do um Kerry last year in the Hardman is I did not want to suffer like an Ironman like people show up and do marathons and we seen it in Dublin last year there was bodies all over the yeah. place for the final ten k an Ironman is something you can't flirt with it will oh. it, it's it's not something you can just show up and do um it's how people it's how people die in them to be honest you know what I mean they're not ready um. Like for me, if you uh, if you play if you play that game and if you if you abuse your body in that way, you're you're going to be in serious serious trouble. You know what I mean? Like, and it's not something that should happen. You know what I mean? I don't personally for me with Ironman, I don't think you should be allowed to do a full Ironman unless you've done a half Ironman. You know? <laughs> well, and that, no, that, and that, and that, just 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 from a safety point of view, because I don't think people realise. I don't think people realise what they go through on the day. You know what I mean? Like, um, I really don't. I don't think they realise what they go through on the day. Um, it's it's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Um, you probably you question yourself about four or five times on the bike, thinking, "Why? What am I doing? You know, why am I putting my body through this?" Right? Um, so like that's what I'm saying. To you, the, the preparation is key. You know, mm. um, and the mindset. Like, you get yourself get yourself as fit as you possibly can. Get yourself to a level of that you've never been there before. But then it comes down to your mind. You know. Yeah. And your mind take that pressure on the day, you know. And some people can, and some people can't. Yeah, for me, for me, um, and one of the guests we'll have on next week, Logan was saying we're going to do lost sheep, uh, Ken Mayer, and that's six weeks before because lost sheep is a tough, tough it's half. A tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. It is a tough half. It's a choppy swim, not too comfortable in open water. So there's a confidence booster for me. Getting out of the water, I'll just feel great. Um, yeah. I think it's twelve hundred meters of a climb. There, thereabouts. Easily, yeah. E- and they're not, easy. they're not easy roads either. They'll be bumpy roads. Yeah. And then and then obviously the run is a is a hilly run as well. So coming through something like that will teach me a lot about me. Um is the aim. And you'll probably agree from the experience of it. Like I know the, the 70.3, we have the joke that Asher, I'll do a full and then I'll do a half while I'm doing the full. But in terms of a a target for a really hard 70.3 and, and leave it all there as best I can. Yeah. I will in that short time get to those dark places about myself. 
Oh, 100%. 100 and, and like, listen, the 70 point three is no joke either. Um, like, as I said to you, it is um, an Ironman is an Ironman, you know, whether it's, a, whether it's a full or whether it's a half. Like, again, as I said to you, if you're not prepared for it, you'll suffer. You know, I've done, I've done a 70 point three in Dublin. Um, I think it was 2017, maybe 2016. Um, the, I think it was the second. Dun, Dun Leary, wasn't it? Dunleary, yeah. But I think yeah. it was the, 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 the first time they changed it from the flat route. They changed it up over the Wicklow Mountains. <laughs> it was genuinely wanted. Like, I, I don't know if I would have done a full on that course. You know, it was that tough to cycle, right? But... Um, I ne- it was it was a, an awkward for me because I'd done my meniscus in in the Cork Marathon in June. I got tripped, literally caught in a in a, in a ruckus, and I went down and uh, I tore my meniscus. And I still wanted to do Dublin, so I knew if I got the operation, I wouldn't have done Dublin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, that that year, and I left it. So I got a steroid injection before it, but it didn't work. To be honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> I hobbled around the, the the half marathon, but the cycle I'll never forget it. That cycle that day, um, actually, a bit of a story on that one. Actually, it was like a bit of a storm the night before, um, the the race, and we swam. There was carnage in the tent afterwards because the buoy came out of water and moved, right in the swim. So we swam about I'd say about half a kilometer, maybe just just over half a kilometer, chasing the buoy. And when we got to it, the speed bump pull was pulling it back into play, you know. So a lot of people, a lot of people missed the cutoff um, in that in that half Ironman that day. They missed the swim cutoff because it, it the buoy moved, you know. So if you were struggling as a swimmer in any way that day, you were under pressure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, but that cycle, wow. Like that's hard. That was that was probably harder than Cork. I felt on the day. Maybe I wasn't as fit, um, because my training hadn't been as ideal because of the the meniscus tear. But like, yeah, I suffered that day man, that cycle. You know. Yeah, the cycling, especially those hills. We've done a couple of cycles in around there, and they're yeah. just continuous. You're climbing for oh, twenty k nearly. It's yeah. It there is. was one. There was one section. I think it was about it was sixteen k constant cycle constant like hill and my legs were just screaming absolutely <laughs> screaming but they're, they're, but they're the parts that give you a bit of character I think you know what I mean and you find out about yourself a lot mm. when you're in those um, those hard climbs you know what I mean like like Windmill Hill everyone everyone dreads Windmill Hill Wind, Windmill Hill is over before you know it you know yeah. the long ones where you gotta sit in that saddle and just grind um, like like for me, like some of the section we say in y'all is when you go from middle in the Leahy's farm, there's a nice pull on that, nice climb, and it's consistent, you know. Um for me, that's probably one of the hardest parts of the course, you know what I mean? Like um Yeah, and, but it is true, like when you put yourself through this kind of hardship, mental hardship, physical hardship, the everyday hardships no longer seem hard anymore. It's it's no. when you're constantly consistently putting you're exposing yourself to this kind of adversity then the everyday troubles are just they're yeah. easily picked up and the stress oh. levels are a lot lower and yeah 100 percent. And, and look it's i always say it's who you surround yourself with as well though in your training you know and um, you have to surround yourself with a good team and um, that's that's the important part as i said like i do a lot of my races there uh, with shane with shane there and uh, shane Fitzpatrick, he's the gm of the team and um and amy hennessy runs with us as well. We were all in, in uh, Lanzarote together. But then we've got a good team that come to all my races like uh, e- Emer, um, my buddy Ty, um, and like they come and support us as well. You know what I mean? So we've got a good little crew that help that helps as well. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to have a have to have a good team around you. And some days you don't want to train and they might give you a pep talk and say, right, you need to get it done. Do you know what I mean? Like um, but like it's it's all about getting your preparation right and making sure that you're in the right place um, come come this happening you kind of brushed over Lanzarote there you didn't just go there for a holiday you ran a marathon then didn't you yeah we ran a marathon yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's it's gas because the, 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 the lads kind of give out to me because I take a lot more serious than some of them you know mm. and um, where like I want to compete like so like I start Lanzarote marathon we were right at the front like we were saying, right, we're going to go and give this a proper go, you know what I mean? Um, but, like, I have to say, Lanzarote's marathon is one to do. 
that's a serious, serious marathon. How so? Is yeah. it flat or is it, it's, what's the no, story line? Sorry. It's, it's, when I say a serious marathon, it's very well organized, right? right. Um, the course is lovely. Um, it's, you have your hills, you have your hills, you have your flats, and, but like, it's, it's just a real good environment to run in, you know? Um, I would definitely recommend that and the holiday, everything, every, everything combined, you know? Yeah. It's out in Tegues, um, and it's a it's a lovely place, you know what I mean? Like lovely place to stay. The marathon we stay in the hotel. We walk out the, out the door of the hotel, and the marathon is right on the um, and the marathon is right on the start line. The start line of the marathon is right at the start of right, right outside the door of the hotel. It was wow, brilliant, absolutely perfect, you know. But um, that was a tough tough marathon um, with the heat. Um, we start. I started really fast. Um, probably should have started a little bit slower. <laughs> but I said, right, I want to go up and smash this. And uh, I, was about, I was about 15k in and I was thinking to myself, I'm seeing stars here. Like, <laughs> I was literally, I was literally um, seeing stars. Um, but a bit of shade came in and, and it rained. For, uh, oh, nice. For nice. It was absolutely perfect. But I have to say, it was probably one of my favorite marathons. No, I haven't said that. You've you done Dublin last year. Yeah. You said, yeah, yeah. I've done Dublin myself. Dublin's amazing, isn't it? Ah, oh, fantastic, fantastic! I was going to ask you about that just because you know you did the the Ironman in 20, 31, 32 degrees heat. You did a, the marathon in Lanzarote. What were your thoughts in Dublin? Because you know, um, I saw your time there. You're a good four or five minutes faster than me down there at the end. Depends on when you're coming back if you're in the first wave or second. Um, I saw a lot of people dropping off and stuff near the end. I saw a lot of people complaining about heat. I know heat's subjective, but uh, what were your thoughts in Dublin that day? No, I love Dublin. That was my second time doing Dublin. Um, and I have to say, like, I get I get I get caught up in the crowd a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. the atmosphere. I love that side of it. Um, but yeah, Dublin, Dublin was epic. Um it, it is every year. I didn't mind the heat in Dublin. Um, to be honest with it, I didn't mind it at all. Um I went to Dublin carrying a bit of a a bit of a glute injury. Um and uh, the Cork City doc gave me a painkill injection into the glute before the race just to kind of, you know, kill it off. Um, um, I think it was from all the all the cycling over the year. Over the, the over the year, I was um, I was I had a hip flexor kind of glute problem. Um, and I think I done personally. I think I done too many races last year. I got greedy mm. after COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Every race. I think we done about twenty eight races last year. To be honest, myself and Shane and Amy Hennessy, we done about twenty eight races. Um. Like we were doing crazy ones. Like we done thirty k, the thirty k or up in um, Kilkenny. Like I think it was like two weeks before Dublin. You know things like that. Like that just wow, shouldn't, okay. be, shouldn't be doing. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> it, was, like, it was a scenario where like we hadn't raced for two years and like we were just getting on everything. You know. Yeah. Uh, it was an amazing year. We traveled the whole country, um, racing. We done racing nearly every every city, but. Um, but yeah, I did catch up in the end. I have to say, like, like I ran Cork a lot more comfortable than I ran Dublin and and Lanzarote. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's in it, but I I definitely ran Cork a lot more comfortable. You know, and I felt fresher. But come 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 Lanzarote and Dublin, I was feeling the I was feeling the pinch. I can only imagine yeah. that. Any hidden gems there? Are those races you ran where it doesn't get enough talk about. Obviously, you talk about the big marathons like Dublin and stuff like that, and your eco trails, not everything else. Was there any of those races you're like, oh, this is not that big, but more and more people should be doing that? Um, I enjoyed Kilkenny. I enjoyed the 30K in Kilkenny. Um, I, I'm trying to think of the ones we've done there now. Um, the one up in Clare. Um, what was it? What's the place called again? Um, I can't remember the name of the place. It was... Give me one second. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what, what they are. Oh, Dingle is amazing. We've done the Dingle half. Yeah, I did the Dingle half. Yeah. Dingle half. That's a tough one. That's yeah, a tough one. Not tough easy. One. That's a long climb. It is a long climb, right? <laughs> I'm just going to drop my phone here now and I can tell you exactly because I pictures them all, right? Um, right. That's, that's a tough that's a tough half. Um, but I did I did enjoy it, to be honest. Um, and the 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 Sanya Sullivan ten it's on this week actually. The Sanya Sullivan um ten miler is a lovely race. That's a lovely, lovely, tough race, a lot of hills in that. Um that was one of my another one I enjoyed last year. Um let me see there now. 
um, there was one, it's part of, obviously Killarney, the Killarney one is an open back. Um, is an open back, and that was a good that was a good race to do, um, as well. I always like Killarney. Any races in Killarney, I think they, they go really well because you have a great night out as well after. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're doing the the Kerry Way cycle, uh, the Ring of Kerry cycle in when is that? July, Sean? Yeah, huh? first first weekend of July. Yeah. It's, it's that, that I, I would call it a race. It's a good r- no, cycle. They, yeah, you can still get a couple of stops and whatever. And yeah, it's yeah. A good day out. You know what I mean? Like it's a good day out. Um, the Water Viking, the the Viking uh, half marathon in Waterford is a good race. You okay. know, uh, that's not a bad one to do, um, and it's well organised. Yeah, and uh, again, I love the ones where they give a good medal, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is such a big pull. Like, I've done a couple of triathlons and they give you like a beanie at the end of it. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't what? like, I'd rather, I'd rather a medal than a t shirt. Yeah, no, that's I, it. Yeah, I, I never, I never wear the t shirts personally, but I'd rather a medal than a t shirt, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. And um, I actually, I've started to kind of vet them being like, what do you get at the end here? <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's why I said this year. I said, I said, if there's not a medal this year, I'm not running. <laughs> not fill up that rack. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I've got, I've got I've got three full racks now. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I want, I want more. You know what I mean? I want a lot, lot more. You know what I mean? But I'd like, I said, I want to do the the ones abroad. Um, mm. definitely, they're the ones I want to, I want to get on more of. You know, and anyone so, that have your eye on that right now? I went to the Chicago Marathon last year. Um, and it just didn't work out um, logistically. I had it all booked and everything um, oh. before COVID. And right. I was with a crew of people that um, they pulled out. We say they got the money back and got them after COVID. So they weren't going. And then I was kind of caught between the rock and the hard place. So logistically, it just didn't work out. But um, I would like to definitely try and get all the major marathons done. Would that have been your first major? You know that would be my first major. Yeah, I would. I, I would love to do all the majors. That like mm. get, I think it's six, isn't it? Six of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I would do the first five before I go out to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd, love, I'd love to do the uh, all the majors. To be honest, mm. and just get that that overall medal at the end. You know, um. But like, I I will I will definitely do uh, uh, Lanzarote Ironman. That that's the that's a bucket list. Without a shot, it's meant to be absolutely horrendous, but <laughs> it's definitely one that I will get to do. You know what I mean? Like, um, mm-hmm. I get y'all out of the way. I think this will be my last year doing y'all, um, and then I'll start going forward to the field and try and get one of the big ones. But as I said, with marathons and stuff, yeah, I'd like to do the the six majors. To be honest, that's the big goal. Yeah, yeah, definitely, right. definitely. You know? So just the last little thing to talk about, like we could keep you here for another four hours, but Easy. you're also running a gym as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so I'm the manager of Power Gym in, in the Dean Hotel. Um I've been there for nearly three years now. Um it's serious, serious setup, um, to be honest. Um, looks class. They put a lot of money into it. Um and to be fair, the the the, the lads the lads are great to deal with, you know. Like Shane is the GM inside. Um and um my overall boss Ben and Kane is he oversees all of the, the power gyms in Ireland, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and they they put a serious setup in place. Like the gym is very functional, very um I wouldn't say it's a CrossFit gym because it's it's not, but like it's more down the road to CrossFit. But like we don't have they don't go down the road of like leg machines, back machines, all that kind of stuff. So it's very functional, but the studios are absolutely off the wall like I teach stage of spin I'm not sure if you've ever done it it's literally all metrics driven it's all zone training and um, everything is up on the up on the TVs so like like a a basic cyclist starting out can, can actually do the class alongside a professional cyclist because you do an FTP test before the class so then your your zones are calculated off your FTP so everyone's FTP is different. So if I'm telling people they gotta be in the red zones or the purple zones, like like my my FTP we say might be like 380, 400, whereas a normal person coming in might be 110. So I've got to work harder than them to get into that zone, you know? So they can enjoy the class as, as much as I enjoy the class. You know what I mean? Like right. and they don't feel out of it because they're still in the same zones that I'm in, you know. Is your F is your FTP 380? I can get up to that, yeah. 
<laughs> Eric, for context, where are you at? <laughs> I think I'm at 205. Yeah, I can get up to that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I'm going to it, depends, no, it, depends. it depends on how consistent I am on the bike. You know what I mean? Like, um, no, what happens to that? You have to realize, no, I'm teaching three or four of those classes a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I'm used to it and I know exactly what I need to do to get that score. You know what I mean? And they, yeah. they see your score up on the TV as well. Yes. And you're doing track <laughs> training. Yes. Uh, and you're doing your own PT stuff. Yeah. You know, so there's no cheating. And and I'm, I'm the type of person in that class, if, if I think someone is cheating, I will call them up because their name is on the wall. Their name is up on the screen and I will name them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But it's good. Uh, they're amazing. And and we have, as I said, we have... um. Versa Climbing Studio in in one of the rooms, and then we have the, the power pedal in the other room. And the the clubs in Dublin and Galway they have um, power run and power box, you know. And they're 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 epic um, concepts as well, to be honest, you know. Can only imagine. And as you said, you've a couple of people training around you, nice support network. Um, hmm. I live in Cork, say for example. How do we get involved in stuff around the area? Because obviously, me and Sean can't really talk about it. What? Yeah. What is there there or, or how can people get in touch with, the, obviously they listen to the podcast, but get in touch with likes you or get involved or, or just make that start? Because you know from transition, the hardest part is finding someone to tell you how to just get started. 100%. Like, like we, 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 we're just uh, starting to set up a little group now. Um, um, it's called um, uh, Team Pro Cork Racing, right? Basically, off the cuff, just our own little little kind of um, get together. But we're, like I'm, I'm, openly inviting people in and come work with us and train with us like they don't have to pay anything you know and um, just just be part of the community come in and like join join the training join the the banter you know the nights away all that kind of stuff do you know what i mean like we get involved do you know what i mean like um obviously if they want to take to another level then they can sit down with me and have a conversation about training plans meal plans nutrition you know what i mean like and and like you know, obviously, it can. Get, I I take it to another level then when when it, it's a kind of business. You know what I mean? But mm. just to join the community and and be part of the group doesn't cost nothing. Just come, just just drop me a drop me a message on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like and and come along. And a lot of people I know myself, even some people are like, "Oh, come on, we go for a cycle." I was like, "Oh, give me two or three weeks till I get fit enough to go cycling yeah. with you." And it's not really about that. And I have to remind myself about that as well. Like you can oh. go along and, it, you know, just, just being with people will bring you along. Like it's, being with fitter people will bring you along. It's not always say that. And I actually had this conversation with, with Shane because I've been trying to um, improve Shane's marathon pace. Um, what did I think one of the lads, um, Timmy said uh, that he was like uh, a fella stuck in the mud coming over the finish line in Lanzarote. Um, so <laughs> Shane's, goal, Shane's goal this year is to break four hours, right? I think it was 4.12 or something like that in Lanzarote. So um, the pace he's running at now, he's going to, if, if he continues it without getting injured, um, he will smash four hours in Cork with 100%, right? Uh, so I've been coaching him away on that. But what happened to Shane last year was, Shane, was, Shane lives kind of down the Mallow direction, so he wasn't getting involved in the group sessions with us as much as he should. And I said to him, if you can train with someone faster than you, and train with someone that's that's a little bit quicker and, and will test you on your training sessions as well, right? That's so important, you know, mm-hmm. because you can get into a rut when you're training. And as and I'll just use Shane as an example. Like Shane was running at 530 a kilometer. And when he went and ran his marathons, he done exactly that. He ran at 530 a kilometer because that was his comfort zone, you know. Um, and now we've, we've Shane running at about, about 450 a kilometer, which is a big difference, you know. Yeah. But, Very big difference. Yeah, but like it was a scenario where like I said to him, I said, you need to do your tempo runs. So you need to have a structure to your running, you know, where you're not just caught in that, you know, I'm going out for a run, you know, because it, it's, and that's fine if you just want to go and, and, and do a run, you know what I mean? Like, and, and go along to races and just kind of just be there and be part of it. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to improve, yeah, well then you've got to have a structure to your training then you know what I mean like you have to you have to have um you have to have a plan set out of like how the year goes and you know you have to see yourself getting better and better and stronger and stronger you know and like your 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 nutrition your training plan 
your strength and conditioning all plays a huge part in that. And that's that's something myself and Sean are really focusing on with me. Sean has, as you've probably seen on our Instagram stories, a very prescribed workout plan. I'm yeah. walking like Forrest Gump this morning after a heavy leg day yesterday. But <laughs> that's not hard. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, but it is. It's it's and it's sticking to that, and it's varying the tempos. It's varying the intensities in a prescribed manner, and yeah, it's it makes the difference, and that's where you see the most improvements, and that's where consistency is important but correct consistency is even more important if you're if you're if you're not consistent right if you're not consistent in what you do like with like number one with triathlon triathlon has to be taken as a sport not three different sports right for me triathlon is one sport right yeah i can be a good runner john over there can be a good swimmer and frank can be a good cyclist right it was putting all those together to be a triathlete right you have to take that you have to do your brick sessions you know, you have to do the hard grind, the hard graft of like your your three, four hours bike sessions on a Sunday, followed by a 30 minute run or a 40 minute run. Do you know what I mean? Like, so they're, they're important to the brick sessions, right? So like with with marathon training, then it's it's having your having your your blocks of training so that you're improving along the way all the time you know, and that you can see an improvement in the race that you've set out. So obviously signing up for not just a marathon, but other races along the way so that, like, you know, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting fitter, I'm getting better, you know. I can hold that tempo in a race a little bit longer than what I was, you know. Because if you want to get your PBs, you have to be able to, when you're suffering, you have to be able to hold that tempo. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we will give a shout out to Shane. We've mentioned him a couple of times. He is the general manager of Dean Hotel in Cork. Yeah. He has kindly invited us down to uh, come and compete with you guys. Um, so I think we're going to stay with you, courtesy of the Dean. Thank you very much to all the staff in the Dean Hotel who are going to have us down. And and uh, we'll get to put our money where our mouth is and, and put ourselves on a start line together and, and hopefully chat a little bit more about where we're going and, and how we're fixing things. You're doing Cork as well this year yourself? Well, my, my plan was Cork, but obviously the, 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 the knee surgery last week has... <laughs> that back. I will probably maybe end up doing the half I won't be ready for the full um, because as I said I got my I two tears my meniscus and I got my patella um, sanded down um, last Tuesday so uh, I'm currently just off crutches so my prep for Cork has gone out the window um, so no my my target is is y'all you know what I mean like it's all mm. head down and get ready for y'all but um, I'll definitely be there I'll do the, I'll probably do the half I'd say I'll be ready for the half I just think if I do the full I done a really good full there last year, and if I went out and done the full and wasn't ready, I just kind of let myself down. And I'm the type of person that, you know, unless I'm ready, I won't do it. You know what I mean? Um, I won't do a half half hours to be honest. You know, so okay. unfortunately, it'll be Shane. You'll be racing Shane and Amy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they'll probably beat me. Amy, well, I'll give it a go. I've got. Amy, to be fair, Amy is flying at the moment. Um, she's done a great race in the Mallow Ten last week. Um, and She's doing a full Ironman in y'all um, this year with me. So, so what's, what's going to be my time to beat? Um, what's your best marathon so far? Have you done a full marathon? 3.35. Three, that's not bad. Um, 3.35. I'd say... I'd say Amy... You, you're, you'll be chasing Amy, I'd say. I'd say Amy will be about 3... I would say about 3.20 odd. You know, oh. she, sticks, she sticks to what she's doing. Um, you know, and listens a little bit more. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Amy's going to get sent to this podcast anyway. Well, Amy, yes. I, yeah. I probably so won't she, beat you, but I'm yeah, going to try and hold on to your coattails. She got a little lecture up me tonight already. Um, she, <laughs> she, 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 the, dreaded, the dreaded alcohol and, um, and puts her head down. She could be a really serious athlete, to be quite honest. She's only 25. Um, she could be a serious, serious athlete. And I mean, challenging the best to be honest, you know, but um, she just got to get herself in that frame of mind where, you know, she has to want this. Well, I, I better get training so I at least keep up. Well, be, <laughs> I'd say shame will be, I'd say shame will be in around the, uh, the three, the three, four, five mark, you know, that's, that, that, in about that, I'd say, I think Amy will definitely be a, a sub 330 kind of in, in around that, you know what I mean? If she continues um, progressing the way she is. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't race you, but I get you. 
We'll be you in good said better times, times anyway. <laughs> we'll be yeah. in good company. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and the, um, absolutely brilliant having the podcast. We, like Eric said a couple minutes ago, we could chat to you for another three, four hours. There's so many from that news in terms of strength training and everything else to go down. We'd love to have you back for part two. Uh, look forward to seeing you in Cork. Um, even if you're not racing that one, um, it'd be great to see you in person. Oh, 100% lads. As I said, look, it'd be great to see you down the hotel and um, we'll definitely catch up um, either the night before the race or, or the night of the race. You know, so we, well, that's we, what we are really good at now. I, I challenge anyone. <laughs> we, we were back in the hotel last year, and because I think it was about seven or eight of us done it last year, um, and uh, we all ended up in the lobby of the hotel, um, and we had a great, like, it was, like obviously you're huh. you're you're shattered after, but like it was a great day. You know what I mean? Like in general, and if you get the weather, to be fair, if we get the weather in Cork, the crowds will come out as well. You know, um, right. I I would love, I would personally love though, just before we finish this one, I would personally love if Cork actually push that marathon a little bit more. Like, simple things like the finish line, get a red carpet down. Do you know the same way they do in Dublin? Um, mm. Same way they do in Ironman. Like, just just, just sprinkle a little bit of dust on it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's a nice route. Like, I enjoyed Cork Marathon last year. It's a, there's a couple of parts that are really, really so things you'll never do, like running through the tunnel. You know? And I, yeah. I know it, might sound, it might sound small, but like, I was looking around thinking, I'm running the tunnel here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, mad, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like in, and, and Cork's such a great sporting town. I just wish that they gave more to that marathon um, because it could become a big, big marathon like Dublin very easily if they did. Especially because it's at the different times of the year to Dublin. Like it's not competing with Dublin Marathon at all. It's a completely different time of year of training schedule. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing really else that time of year for like no, marathon no, stuff. Nothing. And, and to be fair, like the crowds do come out. Like you come in Patrick Street there for the Cork City Marathon. It's absolutely epic. You know, I love it. Um, because you're coming in, like you come in there by uh, the old Finn's Corner and you come down Patrick Street, and the crowds are just bumper to bumper either side. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so, um, I would just love to put like a carpet, but you know, for your finisher pictures and stuff like that, right? A red carpet for Cork right down the middle, the same as they do a blue one up in Dublin, you know. Mm. Um, it just makes it all the difference, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'd love someone to grab that marathon by the scruff of the neck and just really sprinkle a bit of magic dust on it. Yeah. <laughs> Cork <laughs> is listening to us with the fear we're going to take over now. <laughs> oh, so like, look, we're from Cork. Like, it's it's us against the world always, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know I mean? like the Rebel County, like, you know what I mean? Like, the People's Republic. Um, but yeah, I think, like, when we do things, do them right, you know what I mean? Like, make sure that yeah. it's spectacular you know what I mean I would love I would love to grab that Martin and just take it over and say right I'm going to I'm going to create something special there well hopefully soon yeah. because like people can't get into Dublin anymore because the lottery system now for Dublin like yeah. if you're not there now that like there is there's a market there for the next big Martin that people can just sign up and go they're, they're definitely in without worry about lottery stuff like that like, well, why not me, Cork for me me Cork and Dublin should be the two biggest Martins in Ireland you know what I mean like I mean they're Agreed. the two biggest cities so like um, yeah, like they, they need to, they need to do something with it because it'd be a shame. I, 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 many years ago they lost it. You know what I mean? Like the Cork Martin was gone for 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 a good while there at one stage. You know what I mean? Like and they're only getting it back and they've done. They've got rid of the relay now this year. They put a ten k in instead of it. Hmm. Also, you've the half, you've the half, the full, and and ten k. Like Dublin has none of that. Dublin just has the marathon. Yeah, yeah. So like you know, it's for me they need to do something with that. Like they need to really. Uh, somebody to speak to the city hall or whoever is organising it and get them to put a bit of money or whatever they need into it you know get better sponsorship and and, and make it a proper proper marathon you know what I mean like because mm. it would be no harm you know I think people, with people not getting to Dublin people around Ireland will come and race Cork if, if they do it right and on June bank holiday as well it's, it's, yeah, it's a great go. tourism and, opportunity great tourism opportunity unbelievable and, and, and not only that if the more the, the better they make the marathon the more crowds come in like simple things like the expo the expo in Dublin before the marathon is unbelievable mm. it is unreal the one in Cork is just it's just I hate saying this but it's more trunk together than anything else you know what I mean like so like they, they need to be bringing big, bring the big, big brands in and having a big expo that it's spectacular, you know what I mean? So that, that's the build up to the marathon. And then like I love going to the expos. Like the Ironman Expo mm. is always unreal. I know you spend an absolute fortune on it. <laughs> Ironman Iron gear is an absolute scandal, right? But like we all love to to go to these expos and get our bit of gear and 
And then that's your build up the day before, you know, and then you're getting ready. You, you're, you're kind of spending a bit of time with the family then that afternoon and that evening, and then you're getting ready for the marathon the next day. I think Dublin do really well. You know what I mean? The mm-hmm. expo is always really big in Dublin, you know, and it's nearly a, it's nearly part of the event. If you get me like, you know, yeah, you're yeah. Spending two hours at the expo, you walk in the park, you're in out in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so look, maybe, maybe people will comment and say, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. But like, I just think if you're going to do it, do it right. 100%. Absolutely. Well, we'll be down to have a look either way and we're looking forward to spending good time in Cork and uh, oh, give us something different to change. Yeah, definitely. But look, as I said, lads, I'd love I'd love to chat to you again some other time. 100%. Uh, and as I said, even before the Ironman or something like that or after the Ironman and see if I actually get through that one properly this time. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be you good to know. have you on for, for y'all for, for uh, the Cork Mar- Ironman. Yeah. We might Eric. even come down and watch you with a puncture kit. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone to come behind me with a wheel and a puncture kit. <laughs> That's the problem. Spare bike. The pros have a spare bike or a spare wheel. That's what I need. I need someone <laughs> just or cycle behind me and just take their bike off them. <laughs> well, Eric could do with the training, so I'm sure he he'd love to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony, yeah. thank you very much for being on this week's episode of the podcast. It was great having you on. Unbelievable stories, and, and best of luck with the which was which recovery from your surgery first, and with that Ironman in Cork. Going well now. The recovery's going well now. So um, I'm back back on the training for Cork City already. So um, it's just getting back running now. Is the next step. Brilliant. All right, lads. Uh, thanks, man, Anthony. Thanks Bye-bye. so much, Anthony. Thanks very much. <laughs>